So we're over here with Jonathan Kachemba. He's been a longtime fan. Actually, I've had a conversation with him, and he actually agreed for me to come on over and actually interview him, see his dogs, and give you a little bit of insight of what another breeder actually does and how things are going for him. So Jonathan, tell me, how long have you been a breeder? Um, I started really late 2019. Okay. Um, I started 2019. It started with um, my friend Caitlin Tomlinson and Zach Tomlinson. Okay. Um, we got a dog named Cash. They got a dog named Cash. And um, this is actually Cash right here. Oh, okay. Um, is Park. that is that where you get where you get cashing, cashing out. out kennels from? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, he he came from Utah Evolutions Kennels, Josh Stanley, and um, he came to them. Um, some certain situations happened where they had to like sell him and all that, but the buyer didn't come through. They didn't okay. pay all the way. So I was like, hey, what do you mean? I'm going to buy him right now. All I right. handed them the money they asked. I got cash, and that's where I started from. All right. Well, good deal. How long ago was that? Um, like I said, late 2019. All right. Late right whenever I got him, I got him as just strictly a pet. But then I started educating myself a little bit right. more, talking to different breeders. What class of bully is he? He was an XL. XL. He, he's not here anymore. Roughly, he got sick and um, he passed away. Right now, how many dogs you got? I have eight here and two at my kennel partners. How houses. many males and females? I have four males and the rest are females. How many litters have you dropped? None. None? None at all. Okay, so what is your oldest, oldest dog's age right now? Um, that is George Jr. Grendel. Uh -huh. He is. He just turned three. Okay, he just turned three. And your females? Um, how old are they? I have a mutt named Bella. Um, she she's fixed and all that no, stuff. No, we're talking about just breeding. Okay, okay. Um, just breeding. It's Hurricane. She's coming up on her second year. Okay, and th that's why you've been waiting because you want her to be at least two. Yes, sir. All right, good deal. And what are the class bullies that you breed or that you're looking to breed? Okay, um, what I'm looking to breed is XL bullies. Mm -hmm. um, I do have two classic males. Okay. And the rest are classified as um, XLs in the ABKC standard. Okay. Um, all the rest of my females are classified as XL females for ABKC. All right. But um, right now I have two classic males and two XL males. Okay, and I know that you're big with the bully community. Talk to me about the shows and your involvement in them. <sighs> Man, um, the shows itself, it's really freaking nice. Um, the the way that i got started was just by an idea it was late october of last year and um you know i was just talking to some of my bully friends and they were just like yeah you know everyone's been trying to get a show here in texas like a big xl show like cinco de mayo and um luckily um i reached out to a certain amount of people i got in touch with um, a good friend of mine named matthew meredith he's out of california um tc caldwell who's out of dallas um christopher nightingale um um, Chris Armstrong, freaking Josh Dixon, Josh Stanley helped me, Mr. Jesse Clark as well. There was just a list of people that I can go on and on, but it wasn't all about me. I kind of like put the idea out there, but it was really the help of these good. So breeders you put shows on together. I mean, like which which particular registry? What kind of shows? I mean, give me a little bit more insight. Um, well, the one registry, the two registries I used, they were um, BCA Breeders Cup Association and USBR. Um, and I had a fun show. Um, we used USBR and um, BCA because um, ABKC, they couldn't um, do fun shows anymore, lucky because it happened in um, Florida. Mm -hmm. But um, well, that's how it went down. We just tried to freaking get people to um, really come and support and actually do what we've been wanting to do with the XL community was make a big show, a welcoming show, and that's what it was. It was about freaking us coming together, having a great time networking, and it felt right. like a family reunion. All right, well, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at his dogs. And let's see what's up. All right, Jonathan, so who do we have here, man? Um, this is um, George Jr., a.k.a. Grindel. Okay. Um, he's an RCP George son. Um, he's 20 inches at the withers, right under 100 pounds right now. I just had a female in heat. Um, I don't lie about my stats. He's um, not the biggest, but he's right at 100 pounds. Um, I got him from Sp Spuff Dawn. Okay. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I also bought another dog from him. Um, he's a really good mannered dog. He um, loves attention. What's what's him? What what's his role in your program? Um, I got him as mainly as a tool for like um, for down the road for like any like if I have too many of leggy dogs. Okay. He has a pretty good spread for him just to thicken them up. But really, he's just a good house dog right now. <laughs> okay, good deal. All right, Jonathan, who do we have here, man? We have Texas 17 Conway. Um, he's an RCP George grandson, a Sunline Omega grandson. Okay, how old is he? He's um, about to turn two, late November. What are his specs looking like, man? He's um, 87 pounds, 
um, right at 20 at the withers. I've gotten just a couple people say he's 19 and a half, but um, he's right between 19 and a half and 20 at the I got to stop you there. Bro, are those longhorns back there? Yes, there is actually. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yes, sir. All right, so what is this boy serving your yard? I mean, what is he? Is he your main stud or what? He is going to be my main stud as of now. Um, he hasn't had any litters on the ground yet. Um, I have some in-house breedings I'm going to use him for. A couple of people have locked him in for stud, but haven't used him yet. Um, he, he's going to be mainly my main producer as of now. Okay, good deal. Let me ask you, is he a tri-carrier? He's um, Trindle, actually. Okay, I see the Trindle, definitely. He's Just trindle. asking that on purpose. Yes, sir. All mm -hmm. right, man, good deal. Let me see what else you got. This is um, UEK Loretta. She's um, a Bubba Shrimp daughter and an HBK Mara daughter. She um, she's um, a ticked ticked girl. She weighs about um, 92 pounds, and um, she is right at 20 and a half at the withers. Okay. And um, you know she's only about a year and a half old. Okay. Is, what is she to your program? She's gonna be um, my main girl in producing. Okay. Um, I got a lot of big plans for her. What are her specs looking like? Her weight is around about 92 pounds. Her height is around about 20 and a half. At Head the size? Head size, I believe it was around 22 the last time I measured her. Okay. And um, she's about a year and a half old. She's just really chilling. All right, man. Let me see what else you got. This is MBTB's Aurora. All right. She's off of... How old is she, man? Talk to me about her specs. Um, she's 11 months old. Um, I believe 11 months old. Don't get me lying to you. Um, she, um, she was around 70 pounds. Okay. Um, I haven't measured her head, but I know she's around about 70 pounds. That's all the stats I can provide as of now. Okay, that's fair. What is she going to be in your program? She's going to be one of my main show dog um, producers, okay. competitors. She's getting ready to go off her training here in a few weeks, and we're going to fix some issues that she needs with her training to get ready for show. Okay. But, um, yeah, she's mainly going to be my show dog, but also for um, producing wise to correct any flaws in my program about when um, I'm going to be trying to produce better show dogs for the future. Okay. Excellent. Yes, sir. Who do we have here, bud? This is um, Sunline Omega. Um, Sunline's um, Maleficent. Okay, okay. She's an Omega daughter and um, a Dilemma, who's a three times King Casino granddaughter. All right, talk to me. Weight, height, head. Um, her head's around about 20 inches right now. Okay. 20, I, last time I measured it was about two months ago. Okay. I don't know how updated measurements. But she was around 92 pounds two months ago as well. Okay. And, um, What's it called? She weighs about 92 pounds, about 20 inch head two months ago. And her height is right about 19 and a half. What, what are you using her for in your program mostly? I'm gonna produce her for size and okay. also to make sure it keeps um, a bully look along with making sure that um, all my dogs are gonna meet the XL heights and okay. um, the standard of what it calls for. She's very cool, calm and collective. She's very submissive as you can tell. I can see that, definitely. Talk to me about this particular cage and the type of use that you're giving it. Okay. Um, I got this cage from my buddy Ethan. Uh -huh. um, he, he was moving out of town. His parents wanted it gone. I was like, hey, man, I'll take it. He's like, come grab it. I grabbed it. Um, what I use this for is for discipline purposes. Okay. Whenever my dogs, they either shit in the kennel, piss in the kennel. Um, they're not minding me. They're trying to take it. They're trying to take advantage of um, my kindness or stuff like that. Okay. Or, they're just not listening. This is where they go. I see you got misters up there, man. Yes, sir. Um, and a mosquito trap is a mosquito zapper. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I also have a refillable water trough. I'll just dump a little water out to show you that it refills itself. Okay. Um, it's just a standard cattle trough from tractor supply. There you go. And, um, yeah, I could hear filling from here. And it just fills up. This is on... Um, what's it called somewhat of a purification of the water okay um i put an rv style water filter on there for the misters and for the trough itself 
helps keep down the calcium. Okay, so how do you use this as a disciplinary tool in your yard? I mean, what needs to happen before they come here and what happens post? Okay, um, if they stop listening, if they're like trying to push their limits with like, um, if you give an inch, they take a mile. Right. Um, I give them a verbal warning once, I tell them what they did wrong. Um, if they mess up, they come out here for an hour. Um, before I let them back in, I talk to them here through the gate. It's usually like closed like so. Okay. And they're right here at the front, whoever's in trouble. I talk to them about what they did wrong, just like a child. Yeah, and, um, I do the same thing. And I let it open and they get another chance. Okay. If they mess up again, they're um, out here for the night. So talk to me percentage wise. Do they uh, modify their behavior nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10 after that one hour? Um, usually it's a 50, 50 shot. Okay. Um, the reason I say that is because every dog is different. Sure. But, um, what's it called? The, my older dogs, they only had to put him in there once. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens if they don't listen to you that first time after you put them in there? What happens afterwards? Um, they get a talking to, um, I'm, I'm a little vocal with them. I talk to them like, you know, you knew better like this, that, and the other. All right. And I put them out here in the kennel. Um, I do give them a little bit of CBD oil okay. to basically calm them down so the, um, they don't get too wild up around bunch because usually they'll bark a lot. Okay. Um, just to calm them down, and they're there for the night. For the night? Yes. Okay. And what happens in the morning? Um, give me a percentage. Do they modify their behavior? Um, they modify their behavior to listen a lot better because they realize, they're like, oh, crap, if Dad puts us in here, oh, we thought we were going to be here in there for an hour. Oh, the last time I was in there, I was there for the whole night and on the AC. So what is the percentage-wise? Of them correcting themselves? Yes, sir. Um, usually about 9 out of 10 after the second time. <laughs> they okay. like that AC. How honest. did you come across QB and Kel? I saw y'all's um, podcast. Okay. And um, I, I was I sent you a friend request, and I was really interested with your kennel. I like your logo. I appreciate it. And um, <laughs> I started following you. This is whenever I first started. Okay. I was just trying to get a vast understanding from different ken uh, different kennels because everyone does things different. Absolutely. And, um, you know. Every I'm, dynamic is different. I keep saying that over and over again. Yeah. But um, what's it called? I found you on Facebook. Um, I asked a few people about you, and they were like, hey, that's a good podcast to watch. He yeah. knows what he's talking about. Appreciate it. Appreciate he, it. He'll tell you if you're messing up or something like that. If you notice something that he's talking about, it can help you better understand the dogs you have in your kennel and where your direction's trying to go. Wow, good deal, man. And Whoever it was that said that, man, I appreciate it. And um, I just started really just watching from there. I saw you at Mr. Daryl. And all the, all the other guys you usually get on there. I don't Danny, remember their names. Bobby. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you this. Where do you see uh, this bully movement going forward from when you started till now? How much has it changed and where do you see it going? Okay. That's um, a really, um, really good question to ask because it's a mix of both good and bad. Okay. Um, whenever I first started the bully community, it was very diverse. It still is diverse. But what I've noticed is a lot of the people that got into it whenever I started were in for it for the money. I'm not gonna lie, I was in for it for the money. We're all in it for it for the money. If you're selling dogs even for a dollar, straight up business, including me. So ain't nobody getting getting away from yeah. that. Yep. All right. Um, I got into it for the money. I thought I was gonna make a million dollars overnight. Um, <laughs> and you ran into reality. <laughs> yep. But um, I I met some really good breeder friends of mine, okay. and they um they educated me, and I found out really it's just like you know what I just want to be self efficient. Um, my dogs, whenever I have litters and stuff like that, 80% of the profit goes back to them. Absolutely. And um, 20% of it's basically vacation. If I want to, or like add some things to the house, if I want to get like a cool like toy sure. or my dirt bike or something like sure. that. But um, putting that, it back back into your program mm -hmm, to help yeah. it build. Like I said, this is a temporary location. Um, my dogs will help me get to a permanent location with an inside um, place for them, along with AC and heating. I am a plumber. I do have a lot of friends at HVAC, electrical, you know, welding, cool deal. carpenter, all that stuff. So it's going to help me in that process because I don't know everything. Exactly. So and I, it's okay to not know everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it really is because the thing of the business in the bully world, if I've really grasped from my start till now, you always have to be a student. Absolutely. You always have to now be a student. Now let me ask you this. What questions do you have for me? Where did you start originally? When did you, how long have you been at Kennel for One? Where did you start? And on your plan from you started till now, are you on the pace of getting to where you want to be? All right. Been on for about seven and a half years. What was the next question? Um, where, 
um, where where you started, I could be wrong. When you started from then so now, right. are you on the process of being to where you want to be or better? Yes, I believe so. And the way that I judge myself as far as knowing if I'm actually improving is by each particular generation, am I getting what I'm looking for? Yes. Whatever dog you start out with, whether it's your first dog, whether it's a dog that you've made, whenever they produce, are they out producing? Is your next generation better than your parents? If that is the case, then you're definitely moving forward. Yes, sir. With that being said, it does take a while to move forward from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, I could tell you just because I'm working on a particular generation, you already know not every single dog is staying. Mm -hmm. We run a dynamic kennel. Yep. You get graded. Mm -hmm. you, you, may you, be a cut. you may be a first round draft pick but you might end up getting cut and mm -hmm. you may become a free agent. And um, can I can introduce you real quick. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that don't know, like, you know, there's difference between being a pet owner and a dog breeder. Like, I know, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, you should never get rid of your dogs. It's not, it's not even, it's like that, but it's not like that, in my opinion. When I explain that, I would like to say, yes, you know, some dogs don't make the cut. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, is I have a lot of good friends. I have a lot of good people that I've known, that I've known since I was a kid. And they told me, like, if you ever want to get rid of any of your dogs because they don't meet the cut, Absolutely. we would love to take them and we would love to get you um, to tell us how to take care of them and go from there and set us up from there. We'll be more than happy to take No, care no, of them. absolutely. Whenever I say a dog doesn't make the cut, it doesn't mean that it's going to go straight to a shelter. Yeah. What it means is we're going to find a home. Now, it still may be a dog of breed quality. Mm -hmm. And maybe you call me up and you're mm -hmm. like, hey, Raul, uh, I seen you're, you know, moving away from XYZ. Mm -hmm. What's she going for? If she interests you, you yeah. might take her from me and so on and so forth. And the same goes with you, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So it is, it's not about just getting rid of a dog. What I mean is getting rid of a, draw, a dog from a breeding program, from a breeding perspective. Mm -hmm. Does it meet what I'm looking for in order to be able to move forward? And that's, that's another thing. Uh, something like as a tool that may not work for you in your toolbox, it may work in someone else's toolbox. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a part of being growing and also being a good network and working together because at the end of the day, we look at the brighter picture and it's a picture of all of us. So we all need each other. So you think it was going to be this bad? No, I, I thought I thought it was going to be like a little <laughs> tense, but I was just like, you know what? I just get kind of like test anxiety. That's it. But um, I just want to freak. Well, you smoke like six cigarettes. Man. I know <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> habit. Freaking my brother. He just moved in. He's going to help me quit. There you go. And I'll say this, man, freaking cigarettes are the devil. I wouldn't worse to wish that upon my worst nightmare. Well, listen, brother, you already know, man. You're already part of the QBN family. You already appreciate know it. that. Anytime you need anything from me, all you got to do is reach out. I appreciate it. You and always answer quickly. Definitely, whenever you're running a show, I'm going to try to make it there. I understand. God knows when I'm in at that point, but if I am, especially that Conroe show that you're talking about. Yes, sir. I'll do everything I can to make it there. April 15th, 2023, um, Lone Star Convention Center, the Cash Out Bully Throwdown 2023. All right. Now, do me a favor. Go ahead, go ahead and clock out, man. I want to say I appreciate everyone that supported Mr. QBN. Um, I want to appreciate all the people that took the time to watch this video. And I wish y'all nothing but success. And praise God for everything that you're going. And if you're doing really good, keep pushing forward. It only gets better from there. Amen to that. This has been Raul from the Q. Catching you on the next one. <laughs>